to welcome you to today's next session of our Say It Social Live Social Enterprise webinar series and looking forward to a really a very informative presentation by Kevin Dean who is part of our team here. He's our CEO and one of our lead trainers um, and he's going to be sharing with some fantastic information on building a social business organization through training and during the broadcast, if you are interested in asking questions, we'll be taking those in our chat section here on our GoToWebinar um, window there. Um, also, you can engage us on Twitter at hashtag Say it Social. So we'll, we'll be monitoring those waves too. So, Kevin, are you there? And welcome to the show. Welcome. It's uh, great to be here. Yeah. So we're glad to have you. I know you're on our team. So, hey, um, we're going to be looking forward to your presentation here shortly as we get your your deck um, queued up, but Kevin, maybe just quickly for a second, you could tell us what what can we expect today? You know, this um, training session um, is in this webinar. We're really going to help businesses understand why training is needed and some of the key elements that you should look for when building out a uh, training program to help your organization become a true social business. Fantastic. Well, we're anxious to get underway, so I'd say, Kevin, go ahead and take it away. Again, folks, uh, the title of Kevin's presentation is Building a Social Organization Through Training. Well, it's great to be here with everyone today. When we think about the word social, it has really taken on a life of its own. Think about it. You can append almost anything to the word social and get a new concept. For instance, we have social media, social marketing, social business, social enterprise, social collaboration, and social buying, just to name a few. And each of these words, they're a concept of their own. They're similar and yet different. And each of these concepts, these words, have an impact on organizations, how they think, how they operate. In addition, for each of these words you can, that you can append to the word social, there are just as many emotions that are invoked when people hear the word social mentioned. For instance, you have emotions such as excitement, confusion, disdain, hope, disbelief, frustration, or enthusiasm. You know, with all of the hype that we hear today around social, social enterprise, social business, and social organization, it's really all relatively new. We can just think back um, just 10 years ago. 10 years ago, um, in 2003, both MySpace and LinkedIn were launched. And then a short time after that, the next year in 2004, Facebook came onto the scene. And now here we are uh, 10 years later, and we continue to see vast changes and unprecedented um, shifts happening in the marketplace. So a lot has changed in just a relatively short time. When we think about changes, um, the way that consumers make buying decisions is a huge change now because of social. One survey said that 83% of consumers say that it's important to read user-generated content before making a decision about purchases. Um, in addition, consumer reviews are significantly more trusted than what people read from the manufacturers or other companies about product descriptions. Twelve times more trusted than what manufacturers or businesses say. When it comes to the way that people market and sell their products, that's also been impacted by social. One study said that 78% of salespeople are 78% of 78% of salespeople who use social outsell their peers. That's staggering to think that cold calling is dying and that people who are using social, especially from a sales perspective, are getting greater results. We think about how social is impacting companies internally. Companies are using social technologies inside the organization in order to find communication efficiencies, productivity, and even innovation efficiencies. 
IBM, they figured that because of their use of social internally, that they have gained $83 million in productivity cost. Additionally, when you think about employee retention, having social in internally and having it available to employees is a key factor in employee retention. So social has really changed a lot. It's had a significant impact. We're now in a period of time where people aren't questioning the need for social. Most organizations just aren't sure where to start. Um, social isn't something that you can just leave to an intern any longer. Social isn't something that you can leave delegated to one specific department. Social truly touches every aspect of an organization today. In addition, social isn't just about making incremental improvements. It's a complete paradigm shift for organizations. So when it comes to social, it really starts internally. And the way that an organization views social internally, the way that they use it to operate, impacts the way that they are perceived externally. And so that really is a holistic approach that businesses must take to being successful with social today and becoming a social business. But along with making that shift and making that change, there are numerous challenges that organizations are, are facing. For instance, when organizations bring on younger talent, that younger talent, they know technology. However, that talent is struggling to understand the business. They haven't yet gained um, a strong business acumen on how to effectively use the technology appropriately for um, the organization's success overall. Now, on the other hand, when you look at some of the seasoned talent that organizations have, they know the business very well. They've got a strong business acumen. However, they struggle with how to effectively use these new technologies, these new platforms, these new communication tools in order to get um, the results that they were used to getting with their old techniques and their old way of, of and their old approaches. Another challenge that we see is that leaders are slow to shift from what they've, what's been tried and true for them for many years. And even though that they see results starting to wane, they're still struggling on, on making that huge jump, that big leap. Early attempts to um, adopt social um, have always had, had their own challenges. And therefore, um, because some have adopted social earlier and they've taken this let's try approach, um, they inevitably have had some missteps and, and challenges and, and perhaps some failures. And because of those failures, at least perceived for failures because of getting out there and trying, um, they, they now re meet with a little resistance internally within the organization because there's a fear of trying again. There's misinformation. There's uncertainty. And all of this really brings about challenges for an organization. Another big um, problem that organizations are facing is that it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. What worked for one company may not necessarily work for the next company, even if you're in the same industry. Some companies that have this approach of outsourcing their social initiatives completely to agencies, um, they run into challenges also. The agency may know social, but if they don't understand the organization's culture, then that also can be a myth, and, and it's a big challenge for organizations. So we, there's a lot of challenges that, that companies face. And, and if you're experiencing some of these challenges, you're not alone. Uh, a recent survey said that only 12% of companies feel that they are effectively using social media. So for every one success story that you hear, there are three other failures that, that are happening. Um, and, and a lot of these failures are coming about because of the lack of training. But really, it's not just it's, just, it's not just the fault of the organization, it's not the fault of the organization. 
like we mentioned earlier, we're in this new market and organizations are going through this pattern of stop start. It's a jerky progression that they're going through just because things are changing so fast. Um, just this week, um, there have been changes, there were changes to Facebook and how, how their platform works. There have been changes this week to the way that LinkedIn works and changes this week on how platforms such as SlideShare work. And so all of these changes that are happening at this fast and rapid pace make it hard for organizations to keep up. So how can you successfully meet these challenge, challenges? It's really through effective organizational training. Some key areas and some key ways that social helps organizations are one, it sets expectations. It sets the, you can set the expectation within your organization in regards to how your organization is going to approach and utilize social. You can also set guidelines through training on what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. Through training, you're able to give your organization a baseline of understanding so that everyone now can begin having meaningful conversation using the same language, the same understanding, the same knowledge base. And, and that is, that's a key point because what this allows for is for your seasoned talent to be able to transfer knowledge to your younger talent and have a, a great dialogue on how they can work effectively together. In addition, training helps to build efficiency. It helps to build excitement and it helps to alleviate challenges and fears that, 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 may, that may be found within your organization. So what type of training should you have within your organization? While specific training topics will vary from company to company, there are really four key categories of training that each organization should have in place. First of all, your organization should have a fundamentals training. Now this fundamentals training will cover just the basics so that everyone is on the same page. In addition to having a fundamentals training, your organization should also look at having policy training. What's appropriate for your organization? Um, who's going to work, who's going to speak for your organization as a spokesperson? And who's going to be advocates? And how, and how does all that work together? Additionally, you're going to need to have role-specific training. When we talk about role-specific training, that means how, how does each department use organization? You, within your organization, leverage social. You may have different sets of training for your HR department. Marketing is going to have a, their own set of training your sales team will have their set of training. Customer service, they will have their own specific training that's based on the roles that they have. Once you have policy, fundamentals, policy, and role-specific training, you then can begin looking at tool-specific training, training on how to use various monitoring platforms and how to use various social media management systems and, and other tool-specific training that will give people a step-by-step -step direction to help them successfully leverage social. When it comes to these various categories of training, one of the key elements that you need to do is to look at your organization and map out within each of these categories what are the specific line items that your organization should have for each of these categories. After you've developed your plan for the types of training that your organization should have, you really need to begin thinking about how can you roll out this training across your organization. The first step really is to plan your overall program. You really want to look at those four categories that we discussed earlier and map out exactly where you, you're going to train everyone in the long term. So map out the types of fundamental trainings that you're going to have. Map out 
the various depart departmental training that you will offer to your organization. Map out the types of policy training that you want to roll out across the organization. And then map out the types of training that are tool specific. Because your organization will have different tools from, a, from the next organization and each department or individual may use different platforms to effectively leverage social. So you'll need to plan out each of those elements at, at the start. Once you've built out that program, the next step is to begin rolling out that training in phases. It's best to start with the fundamentals. Once you've rolled out your fundamentals training, you should next look at rolling out specific aspects of your policy training. Then next you should move to your role specific training. And then after those three categories of training have been covered, it's not, now you can begin moving into your tool specific training. It's best not to try to roll this all out at once but roll it out in phases. You're going to want to start small and then grow your program over time, learning from the successes and making incremental improvements in your training program as, as you roll it out. You want to make sure that you start slow. Um, don't try to roll it out to, to everyone at once. Start, select a small group and with that small group, roll out the first part and then bring more people in to the training program as time moves on. Continually rolling that program out, you will gain buy-in and success. Who do you start with? Well, start with those who are willing, those who are ready, and those who have a specific need for training. And as you start with that small group, um, they also can become champions for your ongoing training program and initiative. So that's what you want to look at when it comes to your rollout plan. You start with planning out your entire program, roll it out in phases, make sure you start small, start slow, and then start with the willing. So what are the results of rolling out a program such as what we've described, well, there are really a ton of benefits that you're going to gain within your organization. You're going to create an organization that feels empowered. They're going to feel like they know what to do with social, how to effectively do it, as well as how it's going to impact the organization and their day-to-day -day activities. You're going to build an organization that's energized. They're going to feel like they are able to take your business to the next level. You're going to build an organization that's going to be more collaborative, more innovative, and more in touch with your consumers and their needs. So there's a lot to be gained from rolling out an, over, a, a, an overall program that really meets your organization's needs. There's lots of benefits that can be gained, and if you do so, you, you're going to find that you're going to be ahead of, the, ahead of the game, and you're going to be getting results that are truly going to be successful. So those are some of the things that we wanted to share with you today, um, and we're now open for any questions that you may have. Well, hey, Kevin, thank you very much. Um, Excellent presentation. We do have a couple questions. We have time, let's see, probably for one or two. Um, here's one. Uh, you mentioned earlier, Kevin, about interns uh, in the presentation, and I, I think we all agree that this has been quite a practice, even in, in large organizations. But here's the question. Uh, they say, we have a, a number of interns that are handling our corporate communication channels and social but why do you not recommend this? There's a couple of reasons that we don't recommend that, social, that interns don't run your program. And it's not that you, sh that you can't or shouldn't use interns, 
But really, when it comes to social, it really has to come from the top down. You have to take a strategic approach to social, and you really should be using individuals who really know the business and the objectives. So you don't want to put interns in charge of the program. They can, under the direction of a seasoned leader, help to execute some of the smaller deliverables. So your, your, your program needs to be one that is aligned with the business results, and interns, they just don't have that base knowledge yet. They may know technology, but they really haven't learned the business. So if you want to use interns to help you manage your social initiative, they too need to go through a training program. And that training program should outline to the interns what the guidelines are, what the policies are, and, it and that training should also help them to understand the culture and your business objectives. And then once those interns understand that, under the guidance of, of a more seasoned leader, uh, they can help you to execute. But you really shouldn't leave it in the hands of an intern as far as um, designing the program for those reasons. Excellent. Yeah, we definitely agree with that, Kevin. Now, we have probably about 30 seconds or less on this one. I, it might be a quick one, but how do you train brand advocates versus internal people? That makes sense. You know, that's a great question. Um, one of the things that, that you do when in, in training brand advocates is really keeping them informed. Um, and so that really is part of a content strategy that, that you have to create um, up front when you're creating your, your, your overall and your overarching strategy. So internally, you're going to have a training program that really sets guidelines. But when it comes to brand advocates, there are things that you're going to want to help them ap appreciate, such as appropriate disclosures um, and how to speak for the company in a way that represents the company uh, appropriately Perfect. and when and how to engage and where to find their information. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kevin. I think that's all our time we have today. And hopefully you have more questions. If you do, let us know. But we're, we're going to conclude our show for today, Building a Social Business Organization Through Training. It's been fantastic. Kevin, thank you so much for being on our show, and we'll see you around, okay? All right. Thanks a lot, bunch, guys. Absolutely. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you next month at our next show, Save Social Live.